Hey guys, welcome back to another uh, how-to video. This one is going to be one on making a contaminated soil load, and a lot of you guys have been asking me about these and how to make them, and I assure you it's actually very simple. Um, so what I want to do is show you now how to make one of these. Uh, and this can apply to uh, different gondolas as well. I'm using the Atlas Thrall gondola model though because this comes with a styrofoam block that fits directly into the car and it's easier to shape. Plus you can make two loads out of one of these blocks of styrofoam. You could use blue foam um, or any one of those other kinds of foams as long as it's uh, not the kind of foam that's like very, uh, what would it, what's it called, it's the, um, excuse me, the uh, Styrofoam board that's very has all the particles, the little uh, bubbles or the little uh, round like pellets. Uh, you want to avoid the kind of foam that's going to you know tear apart and leave all this you know foam everywhere or anything like that. It's just going to disintegrate. You want to use a foam that's relatively solid, so like a blue foam even or uh, like the pink foam, anything like that could work. Uh, and you can cut those to size to fit any particular gondola that you want to model these on. Uh, on prototype photos though, these uh, are. Uh, in the real prototype I mean they usually use these older thrall cars so this is usually the best candidate I have seen some older models of gondolas being used for the contaminated soil loads I cannot confirm what model gondola they are or who makes them but I have seen them before and so I know that they're out there uh, but for this particular example like I said I'm using the Atlas thrall car now first off the car is very nicely detailed uh, out of the box so it's a great car to do these with as well um, but as I said right out of the box the model comes with this styrofoam block and it's basically a, a styrofoam insert that goes directly into the inside of the car if I can get in here something like this it goes directly into the car and as you can see you have plenty of foam here and you really only need this much about where my finger is here this much foam so what you can do with this block and what I'll go ahead and recommend you do right off the bat if you get a car like this take this foam block cut it down the middle like this you can either do this with an exacto knife um, or you can do it with a you know uh, a hacksaw or anything that has a fine tooth blade as long as it's not going to shred up the foam and pretty much destroy it you want to avoid that you just want to make a nice clean cut so you can use both pieces in the end. Um, if you're only modeling one and you only plan on modeling one then you don't necessarily have to worry about the top but since I'm going to be doing several of these I want to preserve the uh, two pieces here once they're done cutting. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a hobby knife which I have a brand new number two exacto blade here on my knife and I'm going to move the gondola out of the way first but basically what I'm going to do is cut this in half. So what I'm going to do is make a slit across the top here is a guide and then what I'm going to do is just start cutting this block in half like this okay so once you do this you should have the two halves here relatively intact now since I want to save this piece I'm going to go ahead and set it aside for another day and we're just going to focus on this one right now uh, but basically what I'm going to do if I can get this in a better angle here is I'm going to start sloping the edges because you don't want to necessarily put this in. You want it to look sloped like piles of dirt actually put into the inside of the gondola. It's just like making a coal load or a ballast load. It's going to be sloped. So what you want to do is then take your hobby knife and then start angling your blade to cut at the edges of the load like this and just start trimming it all the way around. And you want to do this, like I said, all the way around the circumference of this piece of foam just so you can make these angles, these slopes, and everything else. Uh, that way it'll look a little more convincing once the tarp's on there. So now that you've carved out the, uh, the basic shape of this load, what I'm going to do now, and what you might want to do, uh, if you, uh, you know, want to make this look a little smoother, so when you wrap it, uh, the plastic bag around this, it'll actually look, you know, kind of like smooth piles of dirt, and not this rough shape like this. You can take a piece of fine sandpaper, a sanding block, or even a file like this and just start kind of working on the shape of this and smoothing things out, smoothing your cuts out and everything else. That way it looks, you know, a little bit more even, kind of uniform sloped shapes here. So you don't have to go too crazy with this either, just as long as you smooth things out and get like some of this excess material off the top too. That way it's not under there when you put it off and you have these little blobs of like what looks like boulders underneath the tarp. You want to avoid that look. So something like this 
uh, is really what you want to go for here. So now what I'm going to do is set this aside. I'm going to clean my workbench off, and then we'll come off, uh, come back, and I'll actually show you how to wrap this. All right. So now comes the fun part. You're going to get. You're going to want to get yourself a plastic bag. In this case, I have a Domino's bag, a delivery bag of all things, since I don't have grocery bags on hand. And basically what you want to do is take a bag like this. Now you can do this with either a blue, ba a blue bag, a white bag, a black bag, or a charcoal gray grocery bag. Now, I've seen all different tarp colors on these, uh, so honestly it's kind of prototypical if you have some assorted colors on these anyways. And later on I plan on doing some different colored uh, tarp loads anyways. But for now I'm going to just use a straight white uh, tarp uh, for this load in this case. So what I'm going to do is take my hobby knife again and I'm just going to take and cut out a big section of this bag like this. And it's better to get more than what you need instead of cutting out uh, a piece and then finding out it's actually too small in reality. So what you're going to do is just cut this much out for now. And this should be plenty uh, for the load. And if you even want to, you can uh, take the styrofoam piece and put it on the bag and then cut around that. You could do that too. It would be uh, a little bit better then. Uh, either way, it'll work. So now what you're going to want to do is take the piece of bag um, or the material and you're going to put the load upside down like this. Alright, so what I've done is I've uh, laid out a piece of tape, excuse me, down here and I want I basically took a piece of tape, cut it strips out, and I want to take these and use them to attach the plastic to the styrofoam. So what I'm going to do is, it's pretty simple, I'll go ahead and show you. What you do first is fold the ends over, take a piece of tape, and we're going to basically secure both ends of the plastic to the styrofoam here, like this. And now I'm going to go ahead and secure the corners. Okay, so you can see that I uh, got the load wrapped, and basically once you get all this taped up, it's nice and tight and snug over the styrofoam core like this, and you can see it looks uh, pretty good. Now what we need to do is make the tie-down straps for this, and generally what I've seen on these cars, they'll do four bands across the load, so one at each end, and then two in more over the center of the uh, load or the tarp, covering the tarp. So again, I'm going to take the load, flip it upside down, and I have some sewing thread here that I use for a lot of projects. And uh, this is uh, some, some pretty thick thread, but I find it, it works pretty well to do this strapping uh, for the load. So what I'm going to do is, again, take a bit of tape, grab a piece like this, and I'm going to secure it in place like this. Okay, and then you wrap it around simply like this. And so it makes a strap that looks like this. And I kind of keep it tight so it looks like it's actually, you know, making an imprint in the, the tarp there. So you can see it's nice and tight. You wrap it around again, let it go for a sec, and you're going to grab yourself another bit of tape like this. And tighten it up, get it centered and secure it. All right, now what we're gonna do is take this and snip it off, okay? So basically this is how you do the straps. So again, I'm gonna repeat this three more times uh, for this, and then uh, we'll go ahead and test fit after I get this done. Okay, so basically once you get this done, um, then it should look something like this. And uh, you can see it looks very, very nice. And basically what you can do now is bring the gondola that you're going to do this with into the picture. And you just drop it inside the gondola like this. Until it's nice and snug. And basically 
get this out of the way, you end up with a nice tarp load. Okay, so that's pretty much how you do these loads. Like I said, very, very simple, but it looks very, very convincing. These work very well for the tarped loads that are uh, wrapped inside the car like this. Um, you can also do cars. You can experiment with this a little bit. Uh, some of them that I've also seen have the tarps where they wrap around the top quarter of the car and on the ends as well, where it's on the outside and secured. You can experiment with that if you like, um, but really this is more over uh, the kind of older style of the tarped load where the tarp is on the inside of the car like this. Um, but it looks very nice in the end. And what I'm going to do with this one is actually keep this one uh, in particular kind of clean so it looks like a, a relatively new tarp. And uh, But what you can even do, um, some of them that are a little bit older, you can end up modeling cars like this. And you can see I weathered this tarp up relatively well. And what you can do to get an effect like this is take the load um, before you install it in the car, give it a dull coat, and then follow it behind with some powders and some chalks to kind of make this dirty, grimy effect on the tarp to make it look like a nice, dirty, old tarp cover. Uh, so there's really a lot of possibilities with these cars to do, and it's another fun and interesting prototype you can add to your uh, model rear deck. Kind of like, again, add an interesting commodity load or, uh, you know, something to haul around your rear that uh, really adds a lot of interest in my opinion. And like I said, I have a lot of these and I keep making more. It's honestly a lot of fun to make these. I always enjoy it. Um, so this is like, in the end, this car will look about something like this TILX car does. I'm going to move it back out of the way though and focus again on this car. Um, there is one important thing about these cars when you model them, however, and it's important to uh, look up prototype photos and also know the commodity that it, this is and the hazmat placards that these use. And um, what I do with these is I always put the hazmat placards on the cars. And so what I usually do is make the uh, plastic... Uh, placard holder and then I get the custom decals and install them on the car so that's the only uh, catch with these cars you can model them like this but if you want them to be accurate uh, according to the modern requirements, you have to put hazmat placards on these cars indicating what they're carrying uh, since it is a, a hazardous material. Uh, but that's the only thing. If you do that, uh, then they're pretty much 100% accurate at that point and you can get something about like this. You can see this one has everything that it needs including the placards and it's all weathered up and ready to go. So it's a kind of, again, one of those fun cars you can model and it adds a lot of uh, variety to your gondola fleet. So that's pretty much, like I said, how you do it, guys. Uh, hopefully this video was inspiring to you. You can experiment with this uh, around a little bit if you like you can uh, you know however you want to do these you can experiment with different colored bags to get these uh, different colored tarps and everything there so there's a lot of possibilities here but it's a nice simple little project you can do and it only takes a little bit of time to do it so like I said I hope you guys enjoyed this video hopefully it was inspiring to you hopefully you guys try this yourself uh, if you have any questions leave comments below as always uh, hopefully you like this video and uh, stay tuned for more as always uh, take care guys